we're picking up two special guests. We've got Marcus Skin, who's a filmer extraordinaire, and then we've got Charles Beckinsale, who's been park building for as long as I can remember now. Both Marcus and Charles call Front Valley their backyard, and that's kind of where they've both established their career in the industry, and so it's gonna be exciting to go have a look around. I got you a coffee. How you been, Marcus? Pretty good, Been hanging out at home. Home's Canberra? Yeah. And have you been doing much riding and filming up at Parachute? Because you're normally over in Wanaka, New Zealand, hey? Yeah, so I haven't been able to get over there yet since you can't travel anywhere. So yeah, I've been coming up to Parachute a bit and filming with all the boys. So Parish is where you grew up and obviously started riding and then you got into filming. Who's the crew that you were filming around there in Front Valley kind of like five years ago? So I like moved in with Troy Starrick yeah. and then um, so he introduced me to all his friends. So it's like Joel Cantle, Jai, Kearney, Geordie, Rocco, all the older crew, Crean. Filmed them for a couple of years just for fun. And then how did you go from that into filming for these big projects? Because you're doing projects for Travis Rice, Mark McMorris, you've been to Alaska, you kind of base yourself out in New Zealand now and all those guys come through. It must be a bit surreal to go from the Front Valley of Parish to Alaska hanging out of a helicopter. I don't know, it all sort of just fell into place. Like everyone's always looking for filmers and you just be in the right place at the right time. Oh! Familiar. Too much lemon jello. I, I woke up and I did not feel good today. Got my Yeti. I left my duct tape in Canberra. Duct tape is key for the camera here. Yeah. Right, so what are we looking for? Duct tape. Electrical like tape to hold my camera together. Always get black and no one knows there's this tape in the camera. Is that all you need? Yeah. <laughs> Charles, we will come to pick you up. Charles? Coffee? So Charles, you've been building the parks up at Parisha for how long now? We were trying to figure out before how long it's been. It was from 2013, 2016. And then I've had the last three years off. And I just kind of stepped down as the manager of that program, just with everything else I had going on. So Stomping Grounds, it's essentially you're creating this world-class park for snowboarders from all across the world to essentially dial in their tricks before the season kicks off. Yeah, so it's a pretty unique kind of thing. There's no half pipe and slope style in one spot in the world. Yep. And all these government bodies have like, you know, half pipe and slope style funding, you know, like government funding for all these Olympic disciplines now. Yep. So I was like, if you build like a pipe and a slope style, you can tick off your big air slope style and um, half pipe kind of teams. All that I see is just levels, levels. Right from the cup of the devils. Don't sit at the table with devils. And these devils be savages. Slim to chance with the averages. Sitting on the low like you had a slip. I just kind of started looking for a, for a glacier that would sustain something like that at that time of year. Because October is your, your prime window. Australia is dead and New Zealand is kind of on the, on the deathbed as well that time. And then you've got not enough snow in Europe and North America to start things off. And, people want to get ready just before the winter season. Yeah, cool. So we, we basically rent a, a space on this glacier and, and ship up cats and everything else. And we were hailing up airbags and coffee containers, all kinds of crap. And we, we set ourselves up there for a month of just, yeah, high-end park shredding, really. All right. You vibing, Marcus? So we're going to go check out Charles's park that he built literally last night. Oh, man, I'm getting a bit nervous. Oh my god, that dude went so high. It's only 45 foot that jump, but it puts you 45 yeah. foot up. <laughs> I don't know if I can hit that. There's power out there, yeah. boys. <laughs> Probably should have built this earlier, but here we are. As much tape as you want. Black magic. Got no mate. If you want to lap. <laughs> <laughs> Cell phone vibrating, picked it up, said I see yeah, She raised her voice and she flipped, and then she hung up quick That's so when I asked her who it was and why she sits She told me that's my brother, he ain't got no sense But I ain't even trying to stress it, can we fucking be gone? And I ain't even going front, this shit was turning me on It's like my daddy told me, homie, life's a frame in the picture Just watch the choices that you make, cause they can come and get it I said her cell phone vibrating, picked it up, said I see She raised her voice and she flipped, and then she hung up Remember, I can kind of snowboard as well. Oh, real talk though, like I've got like three or four shots out in the years. Yeah. Okay, so I'm saying a bad of me is. 
Marcus Skin, an absolute asset to the Australian and New Zealand snowboarding scene. Absolutely unreal. Parrish had turned it on today and Charles is actually just getting in the groove now. We're gonna be back up here tomorrow on a super successful winter mission. Feeling stoked. Yep. Yep. Yep.